Hi, welcome. This is the Daily Dharma. My name is Dina with Impressive Warrior. Thank you so much for joining as usual. This is a daily collective reading taking the energetic pulse of the collective group of individuals that are likely to tune into this message. So I have just realized this morning that the last, I believe, five videos that I uploaded in recent days have been uploaded without sound. Many, many apologies to all of you who were frustrated by that. I was obviously unaware. Uh, you're welcome to try to read my lips on those videos. They were, there were some very good messages. Uh, I may refer back to some of those during this one, trying to get those out. One was well, many of them are leading up to the potential for union and manifestation of major prosperity, a whole new cycle for many of us going through the next few weeks, and also mentioning astrologically at the time of this broadcast, we're at the point between the eclipses where the new moon yesterday was in a square to the nodal axis, the lunar nodes of the moon are in a mathematical point where the moon and sun are in an alignment such that one or the other is, um, their light is blocked from us on earth, and so that's the eclipse. And with that eclipse, we have Mars and Uranus with the North Node of Destiny, the point that we're activating our destiny to move forward and doing the, the hard inner work that presents the opportunities incoming. And so this is how we're turning that prosperity on. And this is like the awakening of a long-awaited dream right here. And so with that square, it's saying, have you answered the requirements and the new awareness, the dawning awareness of accountability coming down the pipeline in order to take the new steps to activate your full potential moving forward. So the south node is in Scorpio, representing the things that need to be released, and Scorpio is very good at releasing and burning bridges, but with the north node in Taurus. It's about um, recognizing the, the grounded nature of things, bringing spirit into matter itself. So with this T-square, uh, we've got the sun and the moon and Mercury a little bit further in, about 15 degrees-ish. Well, it's at 19 degrees right now, actually. Um, and at the time of the lion's gate, the sun will be at 15 degrees of Leo. So there's a lot of Leo energy, and the nodal axis being in Taurus, Scorpio, and the new moon in square in Leo, all three fixed signs, ends up putting pressure in the fourth fixed sign opposite of Leo is, of course, Aquarius. So pushing us into that age of Aquarius, it's it, and in Aquarius, we have Saturn right now, currently in retrograde, wanting us to tune into the reality, the expectation versus reality, a lot of forgiveness necessary there, a lot of accountability, and a lot of rededication to our success and our approach to our goals and to manifesting our dreams into reality. And so where, where does our duty lie? Where have we been distracted from those things time and again? Because divine timing is like when you're ready, the opportunity presents. So if it hasn't presented, we're still getting ready. It's still coming down the pipeline. It's in the vortex. So there's this bringing spirit into matter, grounding it into the body, grounding into your body's divine wisdom and intelligence here with this north node in Taurus. And so liberating ourselves from any self-imposed mental prisons or um, anxieties, depressions, any false guilt or shame from things that are not within our control or things that have already transpired, uh, moving forward from that 
place and not holding on to those things is important going forward because Scorpio is um, the sign of of cutting through and letting go and divine release um, the psychic investigator and yeah so not to get too far into that but grounding that into the body into earthly matters is like the more space that we can purge through that inner integration um, purging all of that old information and things that do not serve releasing environments and other people and associates that perpetuate these old cycles or just standing firmly in our own authority and alignment against things that would compromise our integrity or disrespect our our sovereignty or our soul light becomes blocked by something here it's like we've all had different situations of limitation that we're surpassing now and as we purge what doesn't belong we're able to clear the space for spirit to ground into our field into our body merging with spirit is sometimes chaotic i want to say so chaotic meaning that it um it introduces this wobble between reality and expectation between what we think is our potential what we perceive and our core beliefs that we hold about things then blocking the ability of spirit to present us with a solutions mindset and not like itemization of everything that doesn't serve it's saying well okay and so then what what is next what else is shiny if you get rejected from something it's a redirection what else would be interesting to pursue and to explore what else makes me curious what else makes me feel that spark that inspiration the it's that spark of life whenever we are experiencing momentum or sparks then there's something to be learned so that brings me to Uranus with Mars at the North Node, the North Node of Destiny, being awakened and invigorated with the momentum and drive of Mars, the passionate inspiration. And then Uranus is the revolutionary, the rebel, that is the higher octave of communication planet Mercury, which is with in Leo with the new moon. And so we also have the new moon is... Uh, squaring off with the with that node north node Uranus and Mars meaning that there's something that we have to do it's an illumination a revelation something emerging here and this is the willingness to be vulnerable and to display one's creative spark or what they really think and feel uh, going out and mingling with other groups to see and be seen gathering with like minds or just gathering in general uh, resources can be on a different plane than with people at first but this is the spark that um, sense of soul harmonic resonance with what goes on around you leading you and guiding you and so this then I believe possibly for some will be further down the line like around the uh, the timing of the further eclipses which are going to be in end of October early November and we had Jupiter just stationed retrograde in the in the skies yesterday and doesn't go return back to forward motion until November 24th and so our blessings are also under reevaluation, it's like yesterday's reading was a plot twist. A uh, a meeting we had a bunch of prosperity was popping out again and again as the first card. You're welcome to look through those videos. I think I'll just leave them up there. I show the cards as they come out. You're welcome to watch me and make up your own uh, narrative about what I might be saying. But a lot of those videos also, I 
I have been putting a bunch of tag words, hashtags, in the description box below, which then is the continuation of the message sometimes, if you care to look through those. So, anyways, I wanted to just say that this, this um, new moon seems to be, Leo is the subjective self, wanting that respect, wanting that integration, wanting to be heart-centered. And Aquarius wants to be progressive, but being oppositions on, on the wheel, Aquarius in our progressive, dreamy nature and coming into um, a disciplined, realistic approach to our dreams, means that in order to be truly successful and happy and fulfilled to actually bring the most amount of spirit into the body that enlightenment has to happen with the casting off of the, the false ego and the awakening of the true soul integrated ego where what we're wanting is heart-based what we're conveying is heart-based 11 11 on the timer there um, and so it's as we're grounding more and more spirit and more spark of divinity into our present tense, merging with spirit, then the identity, the soul identity is stepping forward and we're recognizing how connected we are to the collective wisdom, the collective Akash, and how we can gain so much insight just by flowing with what our soul light wants to show to us. So I feel like that was a total tangent. I'll get more onto those um, astrological things. I'm trying to just remember everything that was said in a whole week's worth of broadcast and I'm being told it's not as important as I might think it is. <laughs> uh, Lastly, let me just go through just a couple more aspects that are going on right now that seem pertinent. So at the time of Jupiter going into retrograde motion, it was in a favorable, easy trine to the new moon, which is a very nice place to be. So that should be exacting over the next few days, really, because... Jupiter now going retrograde is going backwards at, um, numerology, numerology wise and then Sun and Moon are approaching the same degree so Moon will be passing there today so and yes and Jupiter okay yes yeah, so, so there's this other aspect so in about a month ago we had the timing with Mars was activating Chiron, wounded healer in the skies in Aries, and at that time we had Mercury sextile Jupiter. And so the conversations were happening between those planets where our momentum was blocked by our sense of wounding nature, and so we had to encounter, face our fears in some type of a way, and may have been making some bold new approaches, new ideas, stretching our mind. And now, excuse me, one more thing, that month ago, we also had Venus was activating the North Node and was in a sextile, favorable with effort aspect connection with Neptune, the illusionary aspect, and also the transcendental What's it all mean about, you know, the beauty of our dreams, the beauty of ourself, and uh, making that connection. Uh, a sense of breaking through the lack of trust, the lack of faith, um, moving through old karmic cycles of addiction and codependency, and maybe self-deception and self-sabotage, and moving through that, through inner work that a few in recent times I'll just say it's ongoing there's no point of arrival we're just moving through these and recognizing our ability to move forward in more and more creative functional and fantastic ways and um, 
So now, moving forward, we have now Mars having had his conversation, now moving into the place where Venus was prior. So it's as if that feminine aspect, our emotional consciousness, has already talked and, and imagined and dreamed of this higher path. And now here Mars comes and is breaking through barriers with Uranus to then push and activate and take action upon those highest, the, the point of our highest destiny and reaching for that. So it's like pushing all of these aspects together. It's this, um, the activation that's happening, I've been calling it the light body activation and this, it's through releasing the old debris that then more light is held in the body. The light quotient is rising and so fears are dissipating. Our vulnerabilities are no longer so incapacitating with effort. And so now with Mars here, Mars, Uranus, and North Node, are squaring the messenger Mercury and semi-sextile to Chiron retrograde. So Chiron is still moving quite slow. It's over there in, in Aries as well. So we're breaking through our ability to forge our own path, to decide and display fearlessly our highest path and our individuated sense of character and determination and whatever else that you decided is relevant to your own personal subjective path. Leo in Aquarius is searching for something that creates soul relevance and I mean being able to be respected and um, held in high regard by spirit, man, woman, child. It's like being a part of the tribe, plugging into that human dimension. And so soul relevance is like, well, I am an accumulation of more than simply my experiences or I wouldn't have dreams beyond. I wouldn't have fears beyond this moment, right? It's um, casting of mental imagery. And the clearer our channel is by embodying the most enlightenment, experiencing play, joy, humor, forgiveness, mercy, compassion, will then make room for that sacred passion that doesn't distract us or eclipse our soul light unnecessarily. Um, maybe today is a day I don't need cards. I'm just catching us up with all of the insights. So yes, by embodying so much light in this way, we are able to perceive a new way of being and then as all of these messages and solutions mindsets are present and aware or in our awareness um, we're able to perceive of the higher dimensions I say higher as in higher frequency experiences and this with great awareness comes great responsibility and the elevation that we're experiencing now is pushing us to express in a whole new way and that's where the prosperity lies just beyond that veil of illusion just beyond that ball of anxiety that wall is paper thin that we're ready, willing, and able to approach and push beyond at this point. And I will leave the, um, the channeling 
on the shelf there. Let's move into this card that's been sitting in front of me for a minute now. Number 19. Throw away holiness and wisdom, and people will be a hundred times happier. Throw away morality and justice, and people will do the right thing. Throw away industry and profit, and there won't be any thieves. If these three aren't enough, just stay at the center of the circle and let all things take their course. There's definitely the number three is so prevalent in these last, I'd say, more than a month. Um, in, in one of the cards, it says, I only teach three things, simplicity, patience, and compassion, I believe. But this is referring to the three as well. And three to me is the goddess. It's creativity, the empress. It is the nurturer, the mother. And it is mother, father, offspring. It is father, son, holy ghost, if you want the patriarchal version of the triple goddess, which is um, maiden, mother, crone, the cycle of maturing. So these three words are rules, mores, throwing away holiness and wisdom, that false piety of like, oh, I have to do it for others. If I win the lotto, I give it all away. Well, maybe that money came to you not to give it all away but to do something with it, to gather some type of resource that you will put into practice. Throw away morality and justice, industry and profit. Do it for your heart-based wisdom and the connection to your play, joy and humor. Do it for the right reasons. Hmm. Yeah, like there is no right or wrong way to do something. And so you're at the perfect place right now. 22, 22. 34. The great Tao flows everywhere. All things are born from it, yet it doesn't create them. It pours itself into its work, yet it makes no claim. It nourishes infinite worlds yet it doesn't hold on to them. Since it's merged with all things and hidden in their hearts, it can be called humble. Since all things vanish into it and it alone endures, it can be called great. It isn't aware of its greatness. Thus, it is truly great. Just like, I mean, I was incredibly frustrated that I had all of those messages which I felt were were great that were eclipsed by circumstances and it reminded me how attached we are to our words well I said this and <clears throat> I wanted it to be seen like our our social media presence the mask the facade and appearances and oh well that was clearly profound then oh and it's just disappeared and it's like maybe you wrote some type of like a thesis and it disappeared i've seen that on um, some movies it's symbolic right you you poured your heart and soul into something maybe relationships of the past maybe places of employment friendships and then timing is what it is and there's a point where you outgrow certain situations certain plans certain narratives and a lot of those stories that came through had some bits of karma and we are all aware of those stories we don't need to talk about them there are still people that are that are respecting us there are still people that are going to compare, compete, or judge, or even gossip about us, because that's where they're at. But it's all about where we focus our intention and how humble we are. I mean, we've all 
we all have pros and cons and if somebody else wants to focus on the one thing or the ten things that are quirky or different about us and and um, pick at those there are a hundred other people that would look at ten great things about us and think wow that person's really got it together so keep yourself very lucid in the way that your reality is sprinkled with all kinds of self-forgiveness and self-compassion but also righteously excited about just polishing the gem that you are with more experience and more 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 is kind of um, sounds like consumption but the reason that we are here in physical form is to recognize appetites, consumption, and nourishment. Mind, body, spirit, mind, body, soul, in body. So it's about the experience. It's about um, experience is what brings soul relevance and, and meaning. If we were just instructed there would be, it would be an empty experience. It would be an empty shell, a container. But to feed and nourish our inner light, that's where it's at. Let's see what we have today. Fertility, that came out yesterday as well and a couple other times recently. There goes my camera back to orange and yellow. I think it's about the, the focus of the camera lens. Sorry if it bothers you. It is what it is. The frequency of fertility invites us to be more open, more courageous, more creative, and more joyful than we were before. It activates the potential for something beautiful to grow from our consciousness into a new and grander expression of ourselves. Hello, Leo season, right? And kicking it off with this new moon just before the Lionsgate portal. And the lighter that we are able to make our, our hearts, the less baggage that we sit within, um, the more that we're able to transmute, to cleanse and clear any unnecessary debris, shake that, stuff off into a pile, purge that pile, bless that pile, thank you. I don't want more pain and suffering. I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to transmute the illusion that that's what that was and that that was the meaning of that circumstance. I'm going to transmute that into more joy and more experiences that create joy and intending that I learn my lessons through gentle awareness. And the more you forgive yourself, the more awareness that you're willing to bring upon yourself about where you were going, what your motives were, clarifying those will help you to clarify them before taking action in the future. And knowing this, you can be more courageous and creative. You can experience more new beginnings with less fear and anxiety. Because as you've noticed, no matter how many times you've fallen down, you're still going. Root chakra, grounded into this experience. Breathe deeply into your body and feel your body's wisdom when you've had enough. When you're feeling misgivings, are those fear-based? Are they from another time? Or are, are they based on your intuition? And if you're not sure, ask some questions. Don't make assumptions. Remembrance. Yes. Is this something that is based on a remembered experience? Is this something based in soul remembrance? Timeless, eternal, encountering of a dream, a vision that you may have received about something that you were meant to do or to be or become. 
The frequency of remembrance supports our memory of everything that we have gone through as a soul in body, providing us with valuable information and tools to flow gracefully with and in this life. So that soul relevance and remembering what's worth it and what's not and running ourselves ragged is not worth it. Selling our time for a tiny amount of money, not really worth it. Heart-based is where it's at. So maybe less money and more heart-based is one option, but it doesn't have to be one or the other. When you're really in, in your heart space, the opportunities will pursue you and your time becomes a premium and you set the tone. Soul time, a need to sit back and relax into yourself to recognize, meditate upon what needs to go, what you want to make space for, and listening to your body's guidance and wisdom, listening to your soul. The frequency of soul time asks us to allow the possibility of a new reality to emerge, one that embraces the concept that while the corporeal body is mortal, the soul is timeless, limitless, and infinite. We did talk about the Mobius strip. Um, I believe it was yesterday it came out like that figure eight infinity sign that runs through this here. Uh, energy has been told that it cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be changed and shifted and it's talking about how timeless and eternal everything becomes in unity consciousness when we're when we're flowing with the experiences instead of saying oh this always happens to me we can say i've seen this before there's no reason to make a story out of it I'm just becoming an expert at it. Let me dominate and boss up on this time's lesson and in so doing, I know that I'm closing a chapter on some karmic lesson because now I'm doing it the right way, the best way that I know how. Based upon my heart. What is your heart telling you? We've had a lot of emotions coming up recently, uh, people that are um, breaking through and making a, a shift in a plan that was a long health dream that now based on a heart interaction, a new job, a move of home or a new relationship, can I say that? New, 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 something incoming, it's um, in gathering with others, in gathering every bit of knowledge that we've come into recently there's a, a shift due to this this new change and in new information yeah supports our capacity to love deeply and unconditionally its healing properties harmonize the mind and the body so one more here magic 31 which is another four. So, magical heart. One more here. Integration. Interesting. Integrating the magic of the heart and grounding it into, into matter, yeah. Taking new actions, yep. Yeah. Under the deck we have transition, um, Transition, Gaia, Divine Masculine, Synergy, Crown Chakra, and Root Chakra. So I believe this is that spiritual bridge, that rainbow bridge that humans can actually become when their chakra centers are aligned and online, all lined. And it's like the root and the crown symbolize the below and the above in the way that we are um, nested harmonically into Mother Earth, Gaia, the, the human dimension, like the Tree of Souls on Avatar. 
and how the tree of life, that tree of souls, is then we're nested within the heartbeat of the earth itself, within the planetary arrangements, um, and within the divine dance of those energies and of the lunar dance with the tides and the water that is our we're how much percentage water feeling dehydrated in this moment so if you need to hydrate go ahead and take yourself a water check regularly <laughs> but the root chakra it's like the roots of the tree channeling that human dimension up into the body nourishing the body like eating root vegetables drinking the water of the earth right that's coming into the body from the below and from the above we have all of people's hopes dreams uh, fears and anxieties their social expectations and their perceptions of reality all kind of energetically raining down on us as these empathic sponges that the more receptive and open we become, the more heart-centered we become, the more sensitive to those um, energies we become. And they're flowing through us at all times because we are indistinguishable and entangled with all that is in, in all realms. So everyone else's good and bad and ugly thoughts and emotions are kind of riding the tide. And when we're heart-based, we're able to not integrate those lower vibrational entities and attached energies to ourselves the same way. We're able to witness it with compassion and forgiveness. And instead of taking it into ourselves and feeling crushed and um, oppressed and the futility and apathy that kind of sits within that that energy we can instead of taking it into us in that way we can just to kind of see it in our hands like smoke through our fingers and just say I see you I feel you I heal you I release you symbolically with energies that come through when somebody's judging us I see you, I feel your insecurities and your judgments and your fears and anxieties and your hopes and dreams that you are more important than someone else. And I witness this, but I don't integrate this into my biochemistry. I allow this to pass through, heal, and upgrade it. I wish you peace, love, and wisdom to see through the illusion that you are projecting upon others because they're not an enemy right wounded people hurt people hurt people so this is taking new energies and working with the flow of mother earth that forgiving but hard and firm mother right and so we're open to the below and the above. We're open to those, receptive to them in certain ways, but lucid and aware. And as we're more and more grounded into our own personal body and spirit, making the most light, quote, or the handling the largest light quotient that we can at any time, then we're activating our very DNA. Because the more light that passes through and the higher frequencies that we embody, the faster that we're replicating and the more DNA that's becoming replicated. And we're healing mind, body, and soul by keeping a higher vibration. So I feel like today's was uh, long enough. Um, again, my, apologi my apologies for the um, loss of the sound just want to take a couple more cards and so if I take the shaman deck I know that I'll be here for quite a bit longer and we're already about 40 but let's close this up with some handwritten cards because I know we have some good energies moving through here there's a lot of um, individuals that are starting to really believe in their in their self-love believing in their self-worth 
and attracting love into their lives, believing in romance again. Um, we've had some lower energies as well. Yep, we had this one yesterday, falling for you hard. Synchronicity, luck, divine intervention. So anything else wanting to come out? Yeah, we're being told to uh, take a pause before we respond to the energies of others because the fertility of other people's words in our system can, um, it's like that tale of two dragons or two wolves that live within us all, one that is competitive, jealous, envious, bitter, and the other one is higher-minded, peaceful, loving, compassionate, forgiving, merciful, and which one thrives? Whichever one we feed. Um, and there's a lot of creativity coming through this soul time as well. Like remembering some of your most creative times in the past or some type of ability to, to channel creative essence through some type of work. Like um, many things are a form of channeling higher vibrations. And don't get caught up thinking that you have to sit in lotus, full lotus position up on um, a pillow and say om to connect. There are many ways that you can do this. I always suggest just a walk through peaceful woods with some nice silence, um, just sitting in the sun if that's your thing. Uh, martial arts. Uh, sometimes gardening that's a big one for me uh certain music but certain um activating chakra clearing music anyways these can sometimes help you activate heart remembrance and just spontaneous symbols or or visions or moments come to the memory and Yeah, letting some cycles play out here with Wheel of the Year. We're remembering some type of um, soul skill or like artistic talent or creative talent. Maybe you want to just uh, carve up some wood, make some walking sticks, uh, make some jewelry, uh, pound some leather, tan some hides. Do people, I know a lot of people don't do that anymore, but maybe there's some things that you've forgotten how to do. We talked about bartering and creating commerce with others, not feeling blocked by circumstance, but being able to connect to the solutions mindset, like, okay, uh, to what is prosperity? It's not only dollars and cents, it can be wisdom, it can be uh, sharing thoughts, sharing compliments, or it can also look like saving a seed from an organic tomato, growing your own group of tomato plants, and then selling tomatoes in the form of like ripe tomatoes and spaghetti sauce, salsa, and ketchup, and um, whatever else you might imagine, chili, and all of these things can be created from from some seeds. One seed can feasibly create thousands and infinite seeds going forward. So planting a seed is never wasted. And the more seeds that you can share outwardly of your wisdom, of your love, your smile, your eye contact, and your, your compliments, the more love that you seed out into the world. We know this, right? And then the more those blessings synchronistic, synchronistically find their way back to us. Healing. The more love you give, it is impossible not to receive love back. So giving love can, when we don't give it to ourselves first, of course, that can obviously deplete us. But when it comes from a place of loving ourselves, then it comes out better. And then I'm seeing copycat. Anything you can do, I can do better. Follower energy here with, with does this align with your highest path? 
in a return reunion with someone. So you'll need to sit with your own messages there on that. And I'm going to do a you versus them reading on top of this. So we're going to close this one here and tune back in in a minute here after this uploads for the you versus them, which will be, as usual, little shorts per sign, Aries all the way through Pisces. Sometimes it's five to eight minutes a sign. Other days it's 12 to 15 minutes per sign. And we'll get into the signs for the more specific messages. So thank you once again. Take care and bye for now.